So in this video, I'm going to talk about the IUPAC nomenclature of alkanes. And so the names of molecules, they're composed of a prefix, a parent, and a suffix. So the prefix is, it essentially allows you to know where functional groups are. where functional groups are are located and the parent designates so it tells you how many carbons are in the chain And the suffix designates the type of functional groups. So tells you type of functional group. And this may seem confusing at first, but um, it'll come easier. We'll do some examples. And so let me show you a diagram and so these are the parent and um, and so meth, eth, prop, like all of these prefixes right there designate the number of carbon atoms as you can see so for example if you have a CH4 you only have one carbon so you start with meth and then if it's only one carbon and no double bonds or straight chain you would add the ane part because alkanes always end in ane and so let's say you have something like CH3 CH3 so you would have two carbons and it'd be ethane and then CH3 CH2 CH3 once again a straight chain alkane um, you associate it with the number of carbons 3 over there and that would be propane so it essentially you have the number of carbons associated with it so if you have um, and that can be determined by this diagram right there and then if it's just a straight chain you just add ane in the end because it's an alkane and so you're really only gonna need to know up to 10 because no one really goes further than that and so, I mean, we could go through the rest of these, um, a four carbon chain, a straight chain. So uh, let me erase some of this. So a four carbon chain, I'm just going to draw it like this. So one, two, three, four straight chain alkane would be butane. And then five, one, two, three, four, five. So one carbon, two carbon, three carbons, four carbons, five carbons, that's pentane, and so on. So six would be hexane, seven would be heptane, eight would be octane, nine would be nonane, and ten would be decane. And so it's essentially just a pattern. But this stuff gets a little more complicated when there's like stuff branching off of it. So, for example, um, if we try and come up with a name for this, it might be a little more difficult. And so we'll determine the rules for that. So, when naming branched alkanes, 
the first thing you want to do is find the longest carbon chain. Find longest carbon chain. So let's use something like this, for example. Um, just do that. So find the longest carbon chain and so obviously you could probably see this is the longest carbon chain and if you count it there's one two three four five six and so there's six carbons um, now how do you name the thing the little CH3 group right here coming off of the third carbon well, you want to use the same prefixes, but instead of adding an ane, you add a yl. So in this instance, it'd be 3 methyl. And so you add the substituent using the prefix yl, and then so you might ask well what if I number it starting one two over there well there's a rule for that and um, that rule is you have to number the chain from the nearest n so number the chain from the end nearest the substituent. So number the chain from the end, sorry, and nearest the substituent. And so essentially, you want to number it so that this right here, that group, gets the lowest number and so if you number it from left going to right you'll have that as three if you number it from right going to left you'll have that as four and so it'd be correct to number it the way I did it at first so we'll erase that and then finally if you have more than one for example if you have another one another CH3 then you would just use dye so it would be 3 dimethyl and so let's name this whole thing uh, without the extra and so the whole thing would be named 3 methyl and then that's the name of the substituent you want to do at first and then you count the number of uh, carbons so 6 and that would give you hexane. So it's 3 methyl hexane would be the name of the structure above. And so in the next video, I'm going to do some practice problems because this is uh, something you just need to practice a lot to get good at. And I hope this video helped. If it did, please like it and share it with your friend.